people feel so comfortable disrespecting them because we don't respect them publicly. Thank you to Ryan and the men of the pivot. But it seems as though the community does not agree with you. They had a problem with him saying that, but no problem with this. I was thinking about that the other day. You know, I got a theory that all humans are not created equal. I think that we call ourselves. I think we've had that theory a long time before you did. (laughs) Shut up. We call ourselves. (laughs) (laughs) Just like black people. (laughs) A little late. (laughs) That was good. That was back to back. I can't listen. Listen, That was a good back to back. In joke. Okay, I walk right into that one. I remember a few years ago when a black athlete playing ball overseas decided to make a couple of social media posts about Chinese women. Now, these women are strippers, but the Chinese government banned him from the country. I guess the message that they were sending is even if you perceive that these women disrespect themselves, you are are not from within our community, and thus, you don't get to judge or comment on the women of our community. Let's take a look at how black men responded to a black man defending black women. The, the first thing is, when you think about the two podcasters from the UK, is we don't know if the black experience there is the same as the black experience for African Americans or black people that grew up in America. I'm sure to be on this media tour in the US and to sit with Andrew Schultz was a big thing for them. I don't care if it was a big thing. And in addressing Andrew Schultz, who I do think is funny, who sits with Charlemagne and and has some of these discussion about the culture, I believe he got too comfortable. So I would like to explain some things to him. I want to explain to him the black experience, the black woman experience from my point of view. It was watching my mother start from a bank teller and wake, work her way up for decades to run her own collateral department only to be mistreated when the bank was sold to another bank and be so sick on Sunday that I finally had to say, hey, mom, you're old enough to retire. It was to see her go to that same job eight to five to be treated anyway that she had to be treated because she only had a high school diploma and then find ways to not only feed me, but do homework with me and my brother, take us to practice because my dad worked three jobs. That was the first black woman experience that I had, right? The second black woman experience I had is marrying a black woman and watching her sleep on my cot as doctors try to figure out why I'm 140 pounds and I'm a 30 year old man who was 205 pounds a month before that. Her telling me months after that she would just go in the bathroom and cry every night in the hospital because she didn't want me to worry about her because I was so sick, right? For her to hold my family together so I could be in the household with my children when I was doing things and I wasn't shit. That's the black woman experience. The black woman experience is black women caring so much about the nuclear black family, black women taking care of young black men to teach them how to be leaders, to teach them how to be strong, to teach them how to care about their God, about their family, and it's about their communities. And to raise their young black women to be independent enough to take care of themselves, but to understand how to support a family, how to support a man, while also understanding how to get it on your own. That's the black woman experience that I know. The reason that black women are tough is because when you're mistreated in the way that black women are, if you're not tough, you just die off. You don't survive. That's the black woman experience. And the other piece of it is, too, is something that I've learned and I learned it from black women is people feel so comfortable disrespecting them because we don't respect them publicly. Right. White people for so long have used the excuse, why can't I say the N-word when you say that to yourselves or call yourself that or use that in your music, music, which is bullshit, right? Or white people have said, if you're using the B-word, or they say, if you're using the B-word, why can't I call them that? That's bullshit as well, right? That's excuses to be certain things and be disrespectful when you shouldn't be. So when you're sitting across from Andrew Schultz and he's talking about a spirit, an experience that he can't understand because his wife is not black, you don't have the right to talk about it. You don't have the right to speak on something that you don't know, right? 
And to make a joke about what the experience is, is one thing if you're talking about haircuts and you're talking about clothing and you're talking about beards or you're comparing what our friend Travis Kelsey looked like when he was with Kayla Nicole to what he looks like now that he's with Taylor Swift, right? That is part of it. You start to assimilate to the people around you. What you're not gonna do though is be disrespectful and say you have to develop a defense mechanism because of alleged violence. Black women aren't violent. Black women don't just walk around to beat people or to be angry or to be treated a certain way. No, black women to me were the entire front line of the Alton Sterling protests when he died, when he was killed by cops in Louisiana. Black women are on the front lines of everything that's about us. Black women understood that they had to take a back seat because as we were fighting for rights in our country, that we as men were going to be able to get through the door before they were. So they decided to push us forward and give us ideas and give us help and give us support and be our biggest cheerleaders because they knew we'll have an opportunity to get in the door first. The problem is so many times now we're getting in those doors and we aren't reaching back and bringing them through that same door with us. And this is just another example of that. So whoever is Andrew Schultz's black friend, Charlemagne, you're his black friend. Sit him down. Talk to him. Tell him what the black woman experience truly is because he ain't married to one. And he's obviously never been around enough of them to know how strong, how beautiful how independent they could be while also being supportive, how much black women have done to create this entire world that we all live in and the way that they've poured in it. I'd rather be upset, but I know if I'm upset and I'm loud, that just plays into the same, the same angry black woman trope to the black man trope that he wants us to depict. And I refuse to give him that joy.